organisms. An organism is a single living thing. A bullfrog, a mallard, and a cattail are all organisms. An organism is the smallest unit of life that can sustain itself. Cells, tissues, and organs are alive, but none of these can live for long when they are removed from the organism of which they are a part. This doesn't mean that single cells can never be organisms. Bacteria, many proteists, and some fungi function quite well as a single-celled organism. To survive, all organisms need water, energy, nutrients, and space in which to live. The way these items are obtained varies from one kind of organism to the next. Cattails, muskrats, and mink all need energy, though they obtain it in different ways. Cattails get their energy by using sunlight to turn water and carbon dioxide into sugars. Muskrats get most of their energy from eating plants, including cattails. Mink get most of their energy from eating other animals, including muskrats. All organisms have adaptations that help them survive in a particular environment. Muskrats have a dense coat of fur that, needs, that keeps them warm, waterproof, and buoyant in water. They have webbed hind feet to propel them while swimming and a flattened tail that can be used as a rudder. Muskrats can reduce their heart rate, store oxygen in their muscles, and tolerate high levels of carbon dioxide in their blood, all of which enables them to stay underwater for up to 17 minutes. Each of these adaptations helps muskrats survive the wet environments in which they live. Ecologists who study organisms try to learn how living things are affected by and respond to their environment. They may ask questions such as, how does water temperature affect bullfrog behavior? How many calories does a mallard need each day during migration? How do abiotic factors affect cattail reproduction? Community population to community to ecosystem to biosphere. Populations. A group of the same kind of organisms living together in the same place at the same time forms a population. All the bullfrogs living in a wetland make up a population. The cattails, the mallards, and the green dancer, green darner dragonflies living in the same wetland make up three different populations. Populations are made up of individuals of the same species. If two organisms can mate and produce fertile offspring, they are likely members of the same species. Sometimes barriers such as mountain range, bodies of water, or freeways separate one population from another. For example, the population of green sunfish living in wet wetland is easily separated from the population of green sunfish living in a different wetland. In this example, dry land is a barrier separating the two fish populations. More often, ecologists define the boundaries of a population based on the question they are trying to answer. An ecologist interested in learning how many Canada geese nest in a particular wetland would use the wetland's boundaries to define the population of geese he wants to study. However, an ecologist wanting to learn how a statewide hunting regulation affects goose populations might use Missouri's boundaries to define the population she needs to study to answer her question. How much space an individual organism needs to survive also helps define the boundaries of a population. Ecologists may need just a few hectares to study a population of aquatic insects because the insects don't need much space to grow, survive, and reproduce. However, because river otters need more space in which to live, an ecologist might need an area of several thousand hectares to study otters. And an ecologist studying populations that migrate, such as mallards, might need to study might need a study area of several thousand square kilometers. Populations have several characteristics that ecologists study. One of the most important is population size, which is the number of individual organisms that make up the population. 
Population size grows or shrinks in relation to how many organisms move into the population through births or migration and how many individuals leave the population through death or immigration. Ecologists who study populations try to learn what factors contribute to an increase or decrease in the population size. Understanding these factors can help prevent extinctions, set hunting limits, and control pest populations. When studying populations, ecologists ask questions such as, what factors affect snapping turtle populations? How many river otters can the Grand River watershed support? And how will a new hunting regulation affect Canada goose populations?